where there was a need to reach into the homes of people who lived in foreign places. Mission of NU to build faith and to train Christian leaders around the world. One Iranian who wrote us recently uh, spoke in graphic terms about Nations University. Um, they include ministers, missionaries, housewives, business. In order to serve God better. Nations University puts you at the center of your education. With so much uh, information and so much insight. We thank God because Nations University achieved this. I want to say a very big thank you. God bless you. <laughs> it's hard to believe that 20 plus years have passed since Nations University was first conceived as a degree granting institution. It all began on July 4, 1995, when founders Richard A. D. and Mac Lynn pondered the need to provide teaching and training for new Christians who live in locations that are not accessible by normal means or do not have the resources to pursue additional training. Dick and Mac's original intent was to use volunteers for short-term training stints in faraway countries. Over the next several months, 200 volunteers were enlisted to perform some type of service in locations such as Egypt, Nigeria, Nepal, etc. As volunteers went out, they identified new opportunities and explored new ways to do the work. It became obvious that there could never be enough short-term trips to meet the demand. A conscious effort was made to address this as research. How could new Christians be trained when they had no access to traditional schools or even teachers? And how could the thousands or even millions of potential students be serviced? Well, this led to another stage, that of planning. Nations University is 20 years old. Congratulations to you, uh, students, supporters, donors, all those that have made this such a great work. There are two ways I've come to know Nations University. The first was when Perry Cotham called me and said, Debbie, would you uh, consider doing a marketing um, unit in Russia? <laughs> As several other people had done before me, I said, well, sure. So I went to Rostov on Don, was hosted by the Clay Whidden, wonderful Clay Whidden family, and uh, spent a week doing uh, marketing uh, instruction with the students there. I could tell so many stories uh, of that trip, um, which would also, which would include things like like my Dolly Parton analogy that I thought was so clever and I look out at my students and they just have a total what is she talking about look but it has it has been will be one of the highlights of my professional personal and spiritual life so I thank you for that and planning led to the formation of Nations University in 1996 the new institution was incorporated in Louisiana the first student enrolled in September of that year the nationsu.org website became active in early 1997. By 1998, 50% of the enrolled students were using the internet for communicating with the school. Then in 1999, the school formally adopted a targeted mission statement. The second way I came to know um, Nations University is by helping the board put together a mission statement. Uh, at the time, they didn't have one. I think this was about 1999. And I remember when I first looked at the site when Perry had asked me to go work with this group I'd never heard of before, that it seemed like they were a little bit all over the waterfront in terms of what they do, which is very typical of those of us who are working very hard for God and want to do all we can do, but sometimes don't get quite as focused as we should. We spent hours that day with the board going through a mission statement, which is still on the site today. Uh, mission statements are wonderful things. They focus what you do, they give you a decision-making structure, and that's what this mission statement appears to have done, because you've been very focused for 20 years and you've accomplished a great deal. There's an example for us, even in the Lord's work, when, as He left the earth, He said, go into all nations, teaching them, baptizing them, telling them uh, what they need to do to obey me. Simple mission statement, clear, concise, everything else was execution. So I congratulate Nations University Day and the execution of the last 20 years and building what has been a glorious uh, piece of learning and discipling in the kingdom of God. I look forward to the next 20. Then you would teach the targeted audiences using both formalized degree plans and non-credit courses. But there was a unique twist. 
Since the targeted students could seldom afford the normal cost of studies, the backbone of the effort would continue to be talented volunteers who would contribute their time, talent, and in some cases, money in pursuit of building faith and training Christian leaders, educators, administrators, office support, and public relations volunteers accepted the challenge to help. Now, some 20 years later, we're beginning to see the fruit of those early days of research and planning. Nations University has now helped over 30,000 students from over 120 countries, including over 5,000 students who reside in prisons. Hundreds of degrees in higher Christian education have been awarded. Graduates are using their training to train others. The dream is coming true, but we're getting a bit ahead of our story. Building a university infrastructure would be a monster task for anyone, let alone for good-hearted people who are novices at distance learning, virtually unacquainted with educated foreigners in a non-U.S. environment, lacking language skills, and deficient in the ability to communicate with students who live under regimes that are hostile to Christianity. With the constant support of visionary partners, financial and otherwise, NU began to thrive. In due course, it appeared that formal institutional accreditation was a possibility. Dr. Lin latched onto that goal and never turned loose of it. Phase three encompassed the six years it took to achieve accreditation with the Distance Education Accrediting Commission. Again, the university was blessed with professionals who donated their time and energy to make the separate tasks come together. The school's governing board Board of Regents, held up the hands of those struggling to do the work and never grew weary in the face of what looked like an impossible undertaking. Then the day came in July 2015 when we received notice that Nations University had been granted accreditation. The milestone of accreditation initiated Phase 4. This phase will extend until 2020 and focus on fiscal solidarity. As NU continues to strengthen its programs and extend its global reach, it must do so with a view toward achieving financial sustainability. There is no one thing that is more important than any other in the life of an educational institution. Any number of deficiencies can bring an institution down. However, unless an institution can sustain itself financially, the other factors matter little. Realizing this and under the vision of its Board of Regents, NU has initiated an effort to register a thousand full tuition paying students who can undergird the annual budget for supporting thousands of other less fortunate non-paying students who live around the world. Phase 4 will also require succession of the CEO, reaccreditation, development of foreign language courses, and perhaps new programs. And so, is Nations University just a fairy tale? Is it simply a visionary project of its founders? Or is it answering the cry of many would-be believers? You judge the case. Our foremost gratitude is to God, who enables us to serve Him. Secondarily, our gratitude is extended to you, our partners in this spiritual endeavor. Will you continue to walk beside us?